Hello everyone, this is Alex from alexlancer.com and in our previous tutorial we have completed our local environment preparation. So we have installed XAMPP server, we have downloaded and installed also Composer package manager and uh, we have started our first Codeigniter 4 application. So in this tutorial I would like us to go through the folder structure of this project to understand how the things are working here. So let me open my Visual Studio code where I have uh, opened the first CI4 folder. Uh, this is the name that we gave to our project. So first of all, uh, we, have, we have configured XAMPP in the previous video to, to use as a web root to use the public folder of first CI4 project. So whenever we type localhost in our uh, using our XAMPP, it locates this index.php file. So this index.php file inside the public folder of our, of our Codeigniter 4 installation, what it does, it basically loads all the necessary um, files required by Codeigniter. And here uh, here is where Codeigniter in, uh, initiates or instantiates, I, I should rather say, uh, all the required f system files. And as you can see, the last line here says up run. So I also like the message that they've put here. Now that everything is set up, it's time to actually fire up the engines and take this up to its thunk. So the main um, thing that you have to understand here is that inside our public uh, public folder we don't touch anything. So by anything I mean actually we don't add here PHP files, we don't edit our index.php file also. So the only things that will be added here in the future uh, are the assets files. The assets files like CSS files or JavaScript files uh, and images of course. So that's it for our public folder. All the other PHP files that we will be adding ourselves will go in different folder that I will show you later. So now I would like to go and continue with other, uh, with other files and folders. And first of all, I would like to show you this env file. So this env file by itself, it doesn't do anything as it is now. So whenever we start a new project, we have to duplicate this, this specific env file. So we create, we click, uh, we right click on it, duplicate it, and we add a period, a dot in front of the env. So the name should be dot env. It creates a, a sort of con a configuration file for our for our project. And the main things that we set up here, I would like to, uh, to mention three things here. So the first one is the environment. As you can see here on the line 17, we have the CI environment. What this does, as you see by default, it was commented out, or even when we uncomment it, it is still environment production. So for security reasons, Codeigniter 4 does not enable the debug, uh, the debug mode. So even if you have some sort of an error inside of your application, you will not be able to, to backtrace it because you will have no information and Codeigniter will not display this information for you. So whenever we start a new project, we have and uh, we develop a new project on our local server, for sure we want to see all the errors. Therefore, we uncomment this line and we change the production to development. The next thing we have to set up is our app base URL. So it is also end functional feature, but it is also end a security feature. So we have to add it here. In our case, it is localhost. So we add HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash. 
and as you can see here are also session drivers that we can specify the file handler or the session name and expiration times uh, the same goes for cookies uh, you can uh, you can create you can give some options here um, another one also very important is of course our database so as you can see there are two sets of database uh, options the one is the default as you can see here and the second one is tests so the the tests group let's call it a group is used for uh, for running a PHP unit test in this series we will not cover this uh, so what we will cover is the default default database which of course we will be editing in future videos when we will be discussing our models and connections to the database. So these are the main uh, configs that I would like you to, to remember from this file. And the fact that, uh, that we have to create this file from the, um, uh, from the demo that the Code Igniter provides us with from this env file, we duplicate it and we create a .env file with our setup. So let's move on. Let's save uh, this, close it. So next we have uh, our writable folder. Inside the writable folder, actually we don't do much. Uh, this folder is used by CodeIgniter to store some, some dynamic files such as session files or log files and um, what else it has here, uh, caching files and so on. So we close it. We don't edit nothing manually here. <clears throat> and um, the same goes for tests. So actually inside the test, it is also um, a folder related to PHP unit. The same as in the .env file, if you remember the group of uh, database options that was specifically for tests. This folder is also used by PHP unit and we don't need to use it now and we will not use it in this series. Uh, another folder that I would like also to explain to you, most, most of you will be familiar with it if you are familiar with Composer, but for those of you who are not familiar with Composer, so pretty much every, um, every project that is that has been downloaded through Composer will come with a vendor uh, with a vendor folder inside of it. So as you can see, although we have installed our CodeIgniter 4 application, so okay, we have here a CodeIgniter 4 folder, but what are all the rest of these files? Basically, the rest of these files are just the dependencies on which CodeIgniter 4 is based. So CodeIgniter, in order to run some of its uh, functions, requires also other libraries to, to support it. And therefore, you can see all these other folders. And uh, also very important note here, we never edit files inside our vendor folder. So one of the benefits of using the Composer is the ease to, to update all the libraries and all the dependencies. So whichever file you go and edit inside here it might be very very easy might be overwritten on your next update so don't touch any files here and whenever you have a need to extend or to change something there are other ways uh, to do it in uh, in another folder that we will go now to so we close our vendor folder and we are here left with one only folder and I think this is the most important folder, of course, because this is the folder we'll, where we will be working on. It is the app folder. So inside the app folder, we have some, we have also some folders, but I would like to focus on four of them. So the first one is the config. And as you can see, there are some files inside the config folder. And basically what these uh, files are, mostly uh, here you set up the options for the libraries that CodeIgniter provides. So 
for instance, we have, um, let's say, our migrations, um, our migrations library that will help us migrate tables in our in our database. And here we can set up, let's say, the name of the uh, of the migration table, or the timestamp format that uh, the files will be prefixed with. Or another example here, let's say the validation.php file. So Code Igniter comes with a with a rich set of validation rules, and as you can see, these rule sets are. At, at this point, by default, are configured in four different locations. Uh, but let's say the, the, we want to create our custom validation uh, rule or set of rules. What we could do is we could create uh, our own file. And in order to load this file inside the validations, we would have to add it here, let's say, and name it our validation rules something like that. So basically all these files are uh, the configuration files for each of the uh, of the libraries and you basically you can understand it by the name of the file what they do. The one specific file that I would like to point to point out here is the routes.php file. What it does, it takes care about the whole navigation on our website. The way Code Igniter navigation works, routing, let's say, uh, routing works, is basically if we let, let's start here from the um, from the route default controller. So what it means, it means that whenever Code Igniter for home page loads then this default controller will be executed. This default controller is happened to, to be named also home. Although you are not obliged to call it, to name it like that, you can call you can change it to, to your controller or whatever you wish. So in this case we have a home.php controller. And as I said, this is a controller. So if we go to our controllers folder, we can see it is here inside home.php we can see our class name home. And the, the way Code Igniter does the, does the routing is if you call or if you specify um, as a path inside, so take a look at the screen. Let's say we go here localhost and we, we say home. As you can see, it is exactly the same page as if we would, would just visit the local host without any, any paths, paths specified. So it happens because Code Igniter recognizes the name of the controller and loads by default, it loads its index method. So inside our class home, we have function index public function index and this public function index returns a view function with the name of local welcome message so what what this part means is basically this view function loads a welcome message.php file from within our views folder so check out here here we have our welcome message.php. Therefore, if we would want to extend, let's say, to, to write, to make our URL even, even longer, we could say home slash index. And again, this would be exactly the same, the same page rendered. So we have three different URLs pointing to exact same location. And the reason for that is, as we saw in our routes.php file, the default controller, uh, the default controller for this application, for now at least, is the home controller. But the default method of the home controller is the index public function. So it all makes sense. Everything here is loads just its default values. So 
To wrap it up, the idea of CodeIgniter routing is really simple. You specify, in the beginning, you specify the controller, then you specify uh, a method. If it's not, okay, the, the index loads by default. But if, let's say, we would like to we would like to load another method, let's say show, then we would have to specify it because otherwise CodeIgniter doesn't know what to do. So we don't have method uh, method show, so uh, CodeIgniter will throw a 404 error. So now let's go back again to our, our controller here. And actually let's go to our welcome message.php file. If we come here, you can see this is all the HTML that is, that is being rendered right now. Welcome to CodeIgniter. And let's say, welcome to CodeIgniter. Let's add, add, add at the end, tutorial. Let's say like that. And let's go back to our local host. And as you can see, we have changed our, our HTML file. And of course, inside our HTML file, we can write some basic PHP functions because it is a .php file, so why not, why not to use it in our advantage? So as you can see here, environment, uh, uh, CodeIgniter echoes some environment uh, state as it is now. Then we have a toggle menu. Uh, no, this is JavaScript. Okay, pardon me. Does it has anything in PHP? No. Ah, yeah, here, here it is. So here we can see the CI version. So we can use some basic, um, basic functions of PHP, any functions actually, but because it is an MVC uh, design pattern, we should not use very complex, um, very complex operations here. Only mostly try to use it for uh, maybe some, maybe, not maybe, for sure we will need some if statements, some for each loops, and we will see what else we, uh, we can use it for. But I generally try to avoid using complex logic uh, structure inside of uh, view files. For that, we have our controllers. And of course, whenever we need to get some data from our database, we will be using our models, which is right now empty, but in next tutorials, we will be creating also models.ph um, model, um, um, model classes that will be handling some, uh, some specific tables that we will be, um, that we will generate for our, for our project, uh, for a website. So guys, these are the main uh, the main folders that we list uh, that we need at least for now. Of course, there are many more. There are helpers. There are there are libraries, filters, database. You all uh, we need this all, but I don't want to. I don't want you to overwhelm with a, with much information for no reason because we will be go, going step by step and we will cover all of these folders as as our project requires them. So what I need you to remember uh, for now from all of this tutorial is that we don't touch public index.php file. Inside the public, we will store only our assets. And inside our app application is our app folder is all the, all the folders that we need or even we can create our own. So, that's it guys for this tutorial and let's move on uh, to the next video and actually we will make some um, some I will make some examples how to use controllers and views and how to how to pass data to our views so that we can render some dynamic information there so thank you all for watching see you in the next video